Hey, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing today? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is True Buck Theater, and this is a bit of a, an open letter uh, to Mark Fernandez, the CEO of Collider. <laughs> uh, so over the course of the past week, I've been going... I've been going pretty hard at Collider. I've been I've been frustrated with how I feel Mark handled the situation, and I've been frustrated with the Jack Hind situation, and I've been frustrated with uh, yesterday's live stream. I felt yesterday's live stream was uh, as close to an unmitigated disaster as one could hope for, I guess, in this particular case, and that's not necessarily fair to Mark because I think he went into it with the best intentions. But the problem with having the best intentions and the end result oftentimes comes from a lack of planning. And given the entirety of what he talked about being the inability to compete in the marketplace due to a lack of planning, it just kind of seems par for the course. And I, I say that to be critical, but not to be mean. And and I feel like uh, some people out there have... Uh, I, I, I accused me of being a little bit mean and for that, I apologize. Um, when it comes to YouTube as a business, I care, I care not just about me, but I do care about other channels and, and things like that. And so when I see a channel fail and you see the pain and suffering that happens to the to the person who runs the channel. And in Mark's case, he wasn't entirely a creative, but he still, you could see, cared. And he had to do a very uncomfortable thing, and that was to let go of a lot of people and cancel a lot of stuff. And is it his own fault? Yeah, it is, but it's still a very hard human thing to do. Because you have to make the tough decision. And I, I think that got lost a little bit yesterday. I think that got lost a little bit in, in the last week uh, of corresponding. It felt, in the early stages of it, it felt like it was a cold and callous thing. You know, here he is giving his employees two hours notice before the news broke that they were closing down shop on a lot of these shows. There was uh, some miscommunication in regards to the rule of two, which was his show. And that not being included in that felt like favoritism. He clarified yesterday that he just felt that it wasn't one of the staples of the channel. So he didn't want to include it. But I, I, I can, I was thinking a lot about this last night and like, what if it was me? You know, like how would I, how would I go forward? What would I do? What, how would I, how would I move into the next phase. And with what he was just, what, what he was talking about, moving into VR, okay. I mean, Facebook bought Oculus uh, that hasn't really gone anywhere. <laughs> you know, I mean, VR is, is not the mainstay people make it out to be. It's not going anywhere, but it's also not moving anything. You know, you don't, you don't hear the, the hype surrounding VR like there was. Oh, Beat Saber is pretty dope. The Vader Immortal is pretty badass. There are some good PlayStation games. Uh, Blood and Sorcery. Got it. I want to get a, a, an HTC vibe just for that. But to, to mount your business around it, when you're predominantly known as an entertainment media company, feels like just a, a trend chasing situation. And it's a trend from 2017. It's a trend that is no longer in the position to be as profitable or popular as it was not to say that it won't get there again but it, it just all the indications are showing uh, uh that there is a slow adoption rate by gamers but really it's going to end up being the practical applications of vr that are going to end up really setting the the, the stage and so trying to get on gaming right now it just feels like you're trying to push what would be the equivalent of vr mobile games that's my take. I could be entirely wrong, but that's how I, that's the vibe I got. And that's not even the, you know, that's not even YouTube related. That's something else entirely, but the money, that's where he wants to invest it. That's his business. 
But the real conversation I want to have, the real conversation I want to have is everything boiling down to talking about the for your consideration. Because that to me is the single worst decision you could do. Because it has such a short shelf life. But let's be real. Let's be honest about what it is. Let's be honest about what that is. That is all about trying to get access in Hollywood. It is a series designed for LA and LA only. Maybe New York, maybe Austin, depending. But when you break it down to the to, to the type of content that it is, let's go to the Arclight, which is a smaller theater chain, a high-end theater chain in Los Angeles. Let's do these award screeners. So people come, they watch the movie, and then the cast comes out for a short little Q&A. They do it during award season. And I'm sure you'll be able to get people going all year long, especially as, as new movies come out. But that's still such a short lifespan on the content. Because people aren't going to rush to it. People aren't rushing to it. Because celebrity-driven content is boring. Celebrity-driven news is boring unless it's TMZ-style drama. It's not engaging on YouTube because this is not something people want. People want personality. People want there to be something that they can relate to. They're not going to relate to these people. They might get a couple pieces of information off of watching a Q&A, but really they might read a highlight about it on Twitter or read another article that talks about it. But if you're talking about views and engagement and subscribers, which is exactly what you brought up yesterday, then using for your consideration as an example is like the worst you could do because there's nothing there of obscene value. Not to say that the person behind it, Scott Mance, isn't talented or dedicated and that he's providing a service locally. But who benefits from that particular uh, arrangement? It's not Collider, it's Arclight. Arclight gets the press. But then again, it's an LA thing. That's not going to translate to the Midwest. Tulsa, Oklahoma, you know, Brad Pitt enthusiast is maybe not going to see that. As evidenced by the fact that you have over a half a million subscribers on your YouTube page and those videos barely pull in any views. If that is the reason why you canceled everything, then this is the reason why. When you are going up against Campia and Harloff, I understand you can't compete with them. They're former employees. It's a bit of a conflict of interest. They're former collaborators. They're friends. It's a difficult place to be. But if you want to compete with them, which you clearly wanted to, you seek out new personalities. The biggest problem with Collider was the people that were left are your B team. And I'm not I'm not trying to sit there and attack them. I, I criticize them, you know, uh, they're, they're anchors, they're heels. They're, they're the people that, that kind of add to the conversation, but they're not the conversation. They're not personalities. If you really want this to be a thing, if you really, really, really want this to be a thing, then, then you know what? Migrate over to what John is doing. Don't have a panel. Don't focus on celebrity-driven content. Don't use your contacts. You're not Lauren Michaels. Find people on YouTube that do movie commentary, that have an interesting voice, have something interesting to say. And, and, and listen to them. I mean, I think I'm an interesting enough person, but you know, if I had to recommend anybody, I would say like, you know, have you, have you been listening to like Jody's Corner and Andy Signore? They've covered this twice this week. Videos have blown up. Because they have a good dynamic. They both understand the industry. They both understand movies. They also talk to the normal average person. They come across like your normal average guy. Your everyday guy. And that's part of the personality. That's part of what people were attracted to Campia and attracted to Harloff and Ellis. Some people like John Schnepp. Why they like Jeremy Johns. They just come across as like easygoing people. Maybe not so much Harloff. He's a bit of a hard ass. But instead of trying to take them on at their own game and find replacements, you just upped the B squad and hoped that it would stick. 
and it didn't. Now, you're right to get rid of a number of those shows. You're right to get rid of them. You're right to get rid of 98% of your podcasts because they are so spread across the board. People are just going to see too much. They don't like it. One of my biggest complaints about doing YouTube uh, movie coverage is that if it's not Disney related, people generally don't tend to care as much. If it's not comic book, Disney related, Star Wars, Star Trek, the big key brands, it's very difficult to get traction on some videos. It really is. So instead of looking at the marketplace and trying to find a way around it that's going to be able to reach the audience of people that are out there on YouTube every single day looking for information, running down top 10 lists are not what people really want. There are some channels that do it really well, but Watch Mojo has got the Watch Mojo game covered. You know, I've done top five, top 10 lists. They're fun, but it's like people don't care. My audience will come to me because they want to hear my opinion on what's going on. Good, bad, or the other. And what you needed was to find somebody who could compete with John and compete with Christian and then to put them at a time slot that was available. Running 9 a.m. is when, you know, Campy is pulling in 3,000. I saw it yesterday, 4,500 people or something. In the morning, don't do the morning, do the afternoon. Do the evening. What's the, what's the, the, the drive home like in L.A.? If you want to be around the LA crowd, eh, 6 p.m., 7 p.m., do a show. People are going to be in their cars. 4 or 5 still going to be packed. On the East Coast, it's after 10, but you know what? People put their kids to bed and they might tune in. They can find an audience that way, build it up that way, build up the personalities. I don't want to tell you how to do your job. I don't want to tell you how to run your business. It might seem like I'm just, I'm offering suggestions because I really legitimately feel bad. I legitimately feel bad. I don't want to see anyone lose their job. I don't want to see anyone's business go away. I don't want to see anyone not be able to succeed. But when you can't adapt, you, you die in this industry. And focusing on content, people don't find to be interesting. When your audience is telling you, do not do this, and you're saying, no, celebrities are where it's at. Deep fakes are where it's at. It's just, it's ego and it's bullheadedness. You know, I know you got a studio. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm, you could find people on YouTube and like pay them 50 bucks an episode to like do a show once a week or once a day. I don't know. And have them do it from their home. Like you could come. I'm, I'm just like, this is just an example. I'm not p pitching. You could come to someone like me and go, Matt, I need your help with the show. We want to do movie talk. What, what would you recommend? I'm like, okay, let me put together some people and what's your budget and okay, cool. Let's make it work. And then we put together a talent. You, you put together some people that got, got interesting things to say and you talk about everything and then you clip it out individually because the individual stories will find a smaller audience or a bigger audience faster than the long 30 minute conversations. Because you have to deal with people's attention spans and the fact that 500 hours of content are uploaded every single minute to YouTube. This video has been on for over 13 minutes. That is 6,500 to 7,000 hours of content have been uploaded in the time you've listened to this. Machine learning algorithms, that's what pushes it. So you've got to stay in the game. This is what the rest of us do. And you come at this from a, from a business-based perspective where you think the viral boom of LA from the 2010s uh, is going to stick around forever. College Humor had to lay off 100 people today because they lost all of their funding from the parent company. The viral boom of the internet is over. People want personalities. They don't want corporate content. And they don't care about celebrities because they view them as being corporate content. Anyway. Collider isn't, shouldn't be dead. Collider should still be there. And I think ultimately you could bring it back. But a lot of it boils down to a public apology from Jack. I'm not going to let that go. And acknowledging that the YouTube game is not what you think it is. 
look, these are just my thoughts, man. This is just an open letter. I, I just want to, you know, put it out there and, and hope you hear it. You know, you won't, I know you won't, but I hope someone hears it who works with you and, and takes a second to look at the YouTube culture and, and can really, really assess it because Collider shouldn't have failed. But there was a lack of leadership that brought it to this point, and it doesn't have to be the end. And I hope it's not the end, as do so many other people that are so upset at this situation that they they don't want it to end. That's why they're so upset. There's ways to fix it. There's ways to keep doing what you're doing. VR celebrity content, man. That ain't going to be it. Anyway. If you'd like to talk, my email is somewhere. <laughs> you can contact me on Twitter. Uh, anyone else out there, you can contact me on Twitter. Uh, you guys can comment below. I really want to hear it. If you made it this far, do me a solid type Collider in the comment section so I know. Please thumbs up the video. Subscribe. And how would you save Collider? These are things I want to know too. I'll talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day. Thank you so much for watching and listening. And peace out. Hey, thank you very much for watching the video. If you want to keep the conversation going, and if you made it this far, you clearly do, come on in and join the Discord. Link is in the video description. Can't wait to see you there. Have yourself a great day, and peace out.